Welcome back to a new Power BI video and this time we'd like to talk about KPIs and how to best visualize them in Power BI. Because oftentimes in my own reports what I've did, what I've done actually was using those KPI cards, right? And you're probably familiar with those. So for instance if you tick this option card and then you choose the specific measure you want, in my measures table here for instance I could go with my total sales, I can tick this inside or simply drag it in the fields area, both options would work, and then I have this number in here. And of course then you can start formatting this specific KPI visual here. So you can go under the formatting options and then can, can decide, okay, what should be uh, the category label, do you want to see it or not? In this case I would actually prefer to see it because otherwise you don't know exactly what kind of measure it is, but still you can go to all the formatting options, you can change the color, the text size, the font family and so on. So a lot of options we have here. As well as the background, if you don't like the white color here, you can change the color style if you want. You can play around the, the, with the borders, so by default we have this normal border here if you tick this on, but you can also go with something which I personally prefer which would be that if you go to the border and you adjust the radius here. So if you go, for instance, with 10 pixels, you'll see that now the borders itself are rounded, right? Like that. This is something which I personally prefer, but it's totally up to you whether, of course, you want to use those borders at all or whether you want to skip those and stick to the default visual. It also depends, of course, on your report. The second thing is this shadow option, which is also available for you, so you can tick this on, then you have this kind of shadow effect here, right? Which is also sometimes kind, kind of neat and looks good, but again, it really depends on your report and of course what you or your audience prefer. So for instance, if you really present the report to management and the management is kind of, let's say, focused more on traditional uh, things, then they also uh, always had something kind of different from the shadows, then you might want to don't use them. But of course, if you have someone or an audience where you think it's much more open to these kinds of new uh, options you have and new things you can build into the report, then this might be a good option. Again, it's really up to you and you have to decide at the end of the day for your own sake whether you want to use it or not. Now, beside the normal KPI cards, which we have here, we also have the uh, this one here, so the multi-row -car card, which makes sense if I take this option here then I could choose additional measures. So for instance, I only have a few of them here, so I simply take something random, go with the previous day sales here, take this option. Okay, currently that's blank because I don't have a previous day, but you can choose anything. Let me, let me take the target goal here, and you can see here target goal, which is currently not, not formatted, but let me actually go in here and say I also want to see this as a, let's say a dollar symbol here. Take this option here, and I can see it's one million. Like that, right? And you can do, of course, the same for the total sales. So here I would suggest that you do it actually the, the, the same because otherwise you would have different kinds of formatting. And if they are both, uh, in this case, dollar amounts, then it should be the case that you have the same, basically the same um, formatting in place. If it's percentage number, then of course it's something different. So this could also be an option for you because then you might add additional measures, especially if those belong together, it might make sense to group them. Beside this, it also can be helpful to group them if you're running into performance issues, because in general, the more visuals you use, uh, the lower the performance. So that's general, because each visual has to be rendered um, individually. So if you have a multi-card with a lot of measures, that would be, considering only the performance, a better idea than using, for instance, 10 different single KPI cards here. Okay? Um, but most of the time, if you have a smaller model, it doesn't really make any difference. But I just wanted to mention it here for completion. Now, beside these options here, we also have the KPI card, this visual here. And this is something I like to present to you today, because this is really helpful and looks quite good and also has some kind of color coding built into it. Of course, you need to know how to use it. So let's try that out. Let's actually tick somewhere on the screen and then please click on this KPI visual here. And by default, you see first the same template as for the other ones as well. But now you have three fields here. You have an indicator field, you have a trend axis, and a target goal. Now for my indicator, I could choose my total sales number here. I can simply drag this into the indicator. If I do that, you see by default you don't see anything. On the other hand, for the normal cards, like the multi-card label here, so this one, as well as this normal card, you see immediately the value. So that indicates that there's still something missing. 
And this is why we also have this trend axis as well as the target goal. Now the trend axis itself refers to a date field. So that is why I can use my dates table here and drag this dates field into the trend axis like that. If you do this, you see immediately you get a value. So that's the first step. So you need to have this trend axis as a date here to get this value. The next thing is that currently it looks like actually a normal a card like this one here. There's no difference, right? Beside this little indicator icon up there. So what you want is now you want to add a target goal. And in my case, I have created a measure for that. So I can simply click on it so you can see it. It basically, as you can see here as well, it's simply a number. So for me, it's a hard-coded number of 1 million here. But of course, you can use any kind of target you have in your data source. Like for instance, you have a budget value you want to um, exceed, right, with your sales. Then of course, you can refer to this specific measure, you, right? You don't have to use a fixed number like I do here. It's just for demonstration purposes. Now, if I tick this card here, and now I use this target goal here and drag this into the target goal area here, like that, well, this kind of number in here, right? So 1.34, and now it's highlighted in green, and we can see a little checkbox here. It's got a little symbol here. It's on the checkbox, it's a check mark. And you also see the goal itself, and you see by default what was the goal, as well as the percentage number uh, which you exceeded the goal, basically, right? We um, exceeded it by 34.42%. Uh, so this is built in to you and directly available if you only use this KPI card in here. So that's great behavior, at least from my point of view. And additional things are, if you do not use a static measure like I do here, but you really have actually a number uh, which develops over time for this date axis, then you would also get in the background, of course you can, you can also remove this, but if you want it, you would in the, get in the background a kind of uh, trend which would be visible. For me, it's not the case now because I simply used a hard-coded value here, but if you have really a budget which also develops over time, next to the, the sales numbers, of course, because for different months you have different sales, and if you also have different budgets, and you would use this budget as your target goal in here, then you can also plot this in the background as a kind of line chart, okay? And that's what this uh, default, or this KPI visual here gives you by default. So really not much to configure here, you just need to be aware that you need to drag uh, individual fields here on the specific um, options, and then you can also go to the formatting here, and then you can play around with this and test this further. So whether you want to have the trend axis visible or not, do you want to have an indicator here, and also the text size and so on. So these are general settings you probably are familiar with, right? So also goals here, you can set the goal on or off. If I took it off, you see that now you don't see the 1 million anymore. Um, or the distance, you can also take this off, then you don't see anything. So you can configure it the way you want, but I think the default setting here, also with this value and the percentage number is quite good, and gives you already an indication of what exactly you achieved. So that's it for this video. So hopefully you found this helpful and I just want to encourage you if you have not used them so far and you stick to the default cards here for quite a while, then I would highly encourage you to try this out because this is really a great visual here and gives you a lot of uh, formatting and also vis visible or visibility immediately for your audience. Okay. As always, thanks a lot for watching and I can't wait to see you in the next video. Until then, take care and goodbye.